Hey guys, so I'm just going to walk you through some of the steps you will need to take to get this drawing in the right order. Um, I know that Sean has already gone through a bunch of this stuff with you already, but I thought I would make a second resource for you to lean on in case you needed to rehash some of the tools and some of the processes um, that we'll be going through on this. But um, the TD, the TLDR uh, version of this is essentially running through our boolean processes our views our make 2d and then a little bit of illustrator at the end showing you guys how to live paint so uh, you can skip ahead in the video if you're more interested in the illustrator stuff and less in uh, less interested in the rhino stuff but i'm going to walk you through some of the quick tools you'll need to get this illustrator ready so you'll see i've modeled a quick block here and the first thing you'll notice is that Everything in here is a separate box, and nothing has been carved out or booleaned. So some of you had this problem in your images where uh, a line would come up to your block and then stop, and there wouldn't be this connecting line, and that's because you hadn't uh, correctly booleaned out the object uh, so far. So I'm going to walk you through how to do this. We'll start with a plaster block, which would be one object, so we can union this whole thing rather than carve it out. So I'm going to type in boolean union. You'll see up here on the top left, all of my commands will appear up here. And with my objects selected, they have unioned. Now, there's a problem here with this line existing between two planes that are on the same plane here and here. So a command that's going to fix that is merge all faces. So I'm going to type in merge all faces, enter, and voila, we have a nice clean plaster cube. Um, I can get rid of that for the time being, but I'm actually going to keep it. And it's actually not intersecting anything. So why don't I, why don't I, I'm going to scale this just to illustrate Point. What are we at here? Two and a half. We'll scale to three. And now it should be. Wow, it's still not intersecting. Um, let's move it this way an inch and scale it again one more time. Three and a half. Now it should be intersecting this. And let's make it intersect this block. So. We're going to hollow it out a little bit with some of these shapes around us, but for the time being, let's focus on each object, each um, balance block as set. So I've got, <clears throat> I've got a block here that I'm going to consider one balance block, these four, uh, these four cubes, and the first thing I want to do is boolean these out the way I would have built them. And so let's say we would split this one in half. So I'm going to Boolean difference, type it up in the, the corner here, select. Um, since I already have this object selected, it knows that it's the object that's going to be subtracted from. I'll click my second object, press enter, and it has been subtracted. But I'll illustrate this for the other one. We'll let this block intersect this plane. So. Pressing enter or spacebar uh, activates the previous command that I used. In this case, that's Boolean difference. Um, the one that I want to subtract from is this plane, enter. And the one that I want to subtract with is this block, enter. And so you'll see that this block is intact while this block has been hollowed out. This block has been separated. And then I'm going to notch out this plane again for this cube. Doing Boolean union, select first, select subtract, and then select the subtracting, and we've got a notch. Now, these objects, you can union them, or I prefer to group them. So what I'm going to do is select all of them. Well, before I do that, I'm going to want to actually finish all of my Booleans. So we're going to leave this cube, actually we're gonna notch into this cube. So I'm gonna do another Boolean difference select what I want notched out, enter, now select what I want to notch with, and there we go. 
I'm just going to quickly do a couple of steps here. That one's totally notched out. Notched out. Mm -hmm. Attached in the last one. Okay, everything seems to be notched out. Just gonna have fun with this while I can. So I used scale 1D, and when I went to press my space bar to do Boolean difference, it went to scale 1D. That's something you'll get used to. So subtract from, subtract with, and there we go. So I'll pull this out. And you'll notice there's that hollow point. Um, so what I'm going to do is now group these into their objects so that they're easier. Um, I like to use Control G, but you can type in group if you want. So that's now grouped. Um, my other balance block, let's go with these three. Group. And then these four. Okay, so we have everything into three groups, and including our plaster block, which is actually unioned and not grouped, it's all together. Actually, the plaster block needs to be notched now, so let's see if we can do this with everything grouped. I'm not sure if we can. Difference, I want to notch this out with this object. Okay, it worked. So you can notch things out with groups. Um, now I'm going to notch out the group with a non-group and see if that works. It does. Okay. So there are some easy steps we can take to make some intersections. You'll notice it actually notched it out up here as well because this was a whole object versus a whole object. So you can do some pretty complex work here. And it's been notched out here. So I'm going to run another blue difference and cut it out there. Everything should be notched appropriately, and there should be no uh, surface volumes intersecting any other surface volumes without a line uh, designating that difference. And so, from here, we can export our views. I'm going to unlock my, uh, my construction lines layer, and I'm going to export front first with make 2d current view now i can show hidden lines but for the elevations i think the hidden lines are quite distracting so i'm going to keep that off for the time being make sure maintain source layers is on and going to add it to a new layer that's what this make 2d visible lines section is about is where the layers are going while maintaining source layers so top view you'll see the object, that's our front elevation. And now let's export our right elevation, make sure only the elevation is selected. Make 2D, all of the same settings. And you'll notice it actually exported the top view, and I think that's because I scrolled my cursor over here after I set the Make 2D. So make sure you know where your cursor is and what screen you have selected. Make 2D again. Okay, there we go. And now let's do our axon. So you all pretty much got this correct. I think um, the, the previous video that I sent you was probably confusing because it actually didn't achieve a pure 4545 and if you want we can go into how to do something like that it's actually in the plan view where you get a pure 4545 but it's incredibly complicated so let's skip that for now and just make a 2d in the northeast isometric view that's nice and then Let's just go with these. I'll export this um, by selecting our objects. Whatever you want exported, you have to have selected. So I'm selecting the objects. I'm typing in 
export. Um, you can go up to file and find export selected or export with origin. When you type in export, it generally means export selected. So export, enter. Um, let's get this on my desktop. And I'm going to make sure this is an Illustrator file and call this blocks. Enter. Let's try preserve model scale. One inch equals one and a quarter inch and go with it. Okay, it was successfully written. So now I've opened Illustrator. You can't see my cursor went down and just went toggled the Illustrator box open um, that I already had open. Now I'm going to find that file somewhere in here. Blocks. There it is. Okay, we've opened it and ah, there's our objects off in space. Okay, so one thing that I don't think was totally covered in the video was how to work your artboard options, which we went over already, but might be confusing for some. So your artboard uh, key is over here, your artboard tool, but I use the hotkey, which is shift O for the sake of this, we'll just click that. And any object that is on your artboard, when you drag the artboard, will be moved with that artboard. Any object that's off won't be moved. So what I like to do is make sure everything's locked, and then you can move the artboard independent from that. Now I want to change the size of my artboard to be 11 by 17. Um, and so you can do that up here in your settings if essentials or Essentials Classic is on. I just have Essentials because I'm running an old version of Illustrator. So I'm going to make this 17 by 11. And it looks like our scale mechanism for exporting these lines didn't work so well. So what we need to do is, it looks like this will fit to about, I want this to be 19, 19 divided by 4. 20 divided by 4 would be 5, so it's 4.75, 4.25. That should be at our correct scale, um, or it's at whatever scale. It really doesn't matter. What we're going to do is select everything and give it a black line and start with our base line weight, which for me, I'm going to start at 0.5 and see how that that might even be a little dull. Maybe let's go to 0 0.25. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to lock our outside layer, which is actually intersecting with some other things. So we might want to keep that on. Um, and let's select our wood objects and make those. So this isn't the way you're going to approach your line weights, and I'm not going to finish this drawing by doing every single line weight, but um, you know, you can you can run through and finish the line weights as you see fit. What I'd like to do actually is set our outside line to dashed line. Give it give it a little bit of a differentiation here. Set up a 12 point dash, we're gonna do a three point dash. Live paint, that's what we came here to see. I'm going to select, I'm going to lock my outside layer and select this object in the axon copy, which I'm doing with Control C or Command C if you're running a Mac. I'm going to open, create a new layer, put it at the bottom of everything, make sure it's selected before I paste, and I'm going to edit, paste, and paste. You could also use Control shift v or Command shift v for this. Turn all the other layers off, and now we have a live paint layer. 
which I'm going to name Life Paint. Now, your Life Paint tool is, I believe, over here with. Here it is, under the Shape Builder tool, Life Paint Bucket, or K, if you can't find it. And the first thing you have to do is click to make. You could also do this under Object with um, Live Paint Make. Now it's been made into a Live Paint object, and I'm going to, I'm going to start with red. and just fill these things in. All of the faces facing in just one direction. That's good enough. And then let's do an orange for the faces facing the left. Again, you can get to this by, uh, by using the tool or pressing your hotkey K. Um, and you could also get to this by using your uh, your object thing here. And you can really make this anything you want. Um, what's nice is I have everything else turned off, so I am going to just remove all of the lines and, and have these. Um, one thing else you can do if you don't like your colors, you can, using your direct select tool, I'm going to select one of these colors. looks like I'm just selecting the whole object. Hmm, I'm not sure if you can select an individual color. What you may have to do when you do this is to, yeah. is to manually change all of them. I believe you should be able to in your newer versions of Illustrator direct select a color and then what you can do is run under your select tab and say same appearance and that will get you to select each individual color. Um, one way you can get around this if you want is to have a live paint group for every color rather than um, for the whole object. So let's back out. Okay, now we have a live paint group just for our red. Live paint red. Turn that off. Turn on our objects. Copy them again. Create a new layer. I didn't like the purple, so I'm going to go, or I didn't like the orange, so I'm going to go with purple. Nice. Okay. Control V. Make sure everything is in its right place. And using my hotkey, going to K, select, and we're going to make a couple of these edges pop. A very quick way to do this and get rid of all of the line weights. Now we have the purple and the red on separately, all in the background to your lines, which we've turned on now. You can run your outline, as Sean has suggested. You could even change the top color, but this is just a quick way to build this. So um, yeah, I hope, I hope this has helped a little bit. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm available to answer them and let's have a let's have a good review on Thursday. Thanks guys.